Today we're going to use the beautiful Baby Lock Accolade 8 thread serger to do some bindings. We're going to take a deep dive into the specialty feet that this machine can use to do some pretty cool things. We're going to use a basic rolled hem to accent a traditional binding and use some of the neat attachments and feet <laughs> that you can get for the Accolade. I'm Kathy. This is Sewing Tech Talk. Let's start to serge. So the giveaway for today's video is a great box of embroidery thread. Every time you like, share, or comment, you're entered for a chance to win. Now, check back in a couple days and see if you can claim your prize when you are the winner. You know, embroidery thread is what I'm going to use for the first technique that we're going to talk about today. So, let's talk about how we can use a serger to enhance just a traditional quilt binding that's not even sewn on with a serger, just adding a little something something to a quilt binding. So here's a little quilt that I did. And what I did is I decided that I needed a little bit of contrast between the gray and the dark gray binding. So I added a little rolled hem in yellow and it looks like I did the world's coolest little uh, piping around there, but it's really just thread. It's the rolled hem on the serger. So this is what we're going to talk about doing today. So that's just using a four thread regular serger. The Baby Lock Accolade, the one we're playing with today, is an eight thread serger. That means it does all the overlock functions. It also does all the cover stitch functions as well. So we will be playing with cover stitch. When we use the bias binders, there's four different ones available for the machine and they all come in the Accolade foot kit we're going to be using either the cover stitch or the chain stitch. So let's talk a little bit about some of the feet that we are going to be playing with today. So when I'm doing that rolled hem, I am going to talk about using the lace attacher foot to use that rolled hem. Now a lot of these feet have names, but you can actually, I kind of call it MacGyvering the feet. You remember MacGyver, right? He's the guy on TV that you could give a toothpick and a wad of chewing gum and he's going to build you a rocket launcher. Well, you can use some of these feet for a lot different purposes than they're made for. So we're going to do that with the baby lock, um, the lace joining foot. We're not going to use it for lace. I'm going to talk about the pin tuck foot as well when we get into the chain stitch. Uh, not going to make pin tucks. We're going to use it for something a little bit else. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the curving foot. We may or may not use it depending on whether we need it. Talk about when the seam guide is a good choice. And of course, we're going to play with all these attachments. Now, let's talk about that rolled hem. Now the rolled hem, like I said, is that little edge I'm going to use for the binding. So that looks like, here's another one that I did because I really love this technique. I did this one and on this one what I did is I used in the upper looper because remember the rolled hem, mostly the upper looper is what shows out. So in that upper loopers, upper looper, I used two colors of embroidery thread and it came out just fine. It is a little thickish. Now there's all kinds of really great decorative threads that just the serger just loves them. But when you're doing a rolled hem, it's kind of a little small delicate stitch. So if you're going to use something a little bit thicker, a 12 weight, or even a six weight, which you can both use in a serger, they're a little bit chunky to use for a rolled hem. So I'm going to use just a single uh, embroidery thread in my upper looper and it gives me a fine delicate stitch. You'll see that in just a little bit. Now I also take my, I cut my bindings. Now you can use a bias binding or you can cut it on the straight of grain. And you're going to need, obviously, enough for your project, right? The width that you cut depends on the attachment that you're going to use. We'll talk about that when we get into using the binders. And another supply I want to re uh, refresh your memory on is Best Press 2. Now, Best, best Press 2 is the other Best Press. It's not just for pressing, it adds a little bit of body. And these binding fabrics are going to really appreciate a little bit binding when they get going. So let me push this aside and let's get started with that rolled hem. 
I've already set up the machine. Now the machine is easy to set up for the rolled hem. The baby lock accolade and all the other baby lock self-threading sergers come with what's called a quick reference threading guide. And what that does is that takes, now this machine has 87 different stitch combinations. It doesn't show them all here, but it shows exactly what you might need to set up for that, for that rolled, that rolled wave. You can even do, there's a special stitch called the reverse wave and you can do that a rolled hem with that with a wave so you can make this little cording even extra special fancy. So you want to set up and thread your serger according to the chart. This is just a rolled hem. So let's move this aside and I want to talk a little bit about the standard foot and the lace joining foot. Now I'm going to do this rolled hem now here's the machine set up for the rolled hem and like I said I just followed the chart to set that up. Now the lace joining foot traditionally is for joining lace to fabric and but I call it the this is the most amazing seam guide foot for the serger. Why? Because this little guide right here is movable from side to side so I can use it to help me guide the fabric. I'm going to put my binding on the traditional way. Let me show you. I've already got started. So my binding is put on the traditional way for the little quilt that I'm going to do and I'm going to use that rolled hem as an accent. So you can see what I did. The one difference that I did do is I stitched the binding to the back side of the quilt and I'm going to bring it around to the front. So it's going to look something like this except I'm going to have that rolled hem coming right around that edge right there. Got it? Now there is a handout that's going to talk you through this process, all the things you need to consider and exactly to remind you to sew it on the back side to bring it to the front. Otherwise you'd have a pretty corded piping on the back. So this binding is just sewn on the traditional way and it's just sewn on with the sewing machine. Everything's about the same. So now let's put that rolled hem on the edge and I suggest whenever you do something like this you start with a practice and I've done that already because I knew you were coming. So here's my little rolled hem that I'm going to do. See how pretty that is? Here's the right side, here's the wrong side and this is what's going to come over to the top of the quilt and show out as my little cording or trim. So why does this lace joining foot work? Well I have a folded edge here and I don't necessarily want to cut it. Remember a serger has a blade and it can cut. So what I'm going to do is turn down the blade. Oh, but first let's put the foot on. So let's take our needle all the way to the top. The traditional foot, it, great you could use it for this but if you have a specialty foot why not rock and roll with a specialty foot. So let's take this other foot off, just snaps right off and the lace joining foot is just going to snap right on. Now if you wanted to sew your binding on not using a sewing machine but with a serger, <laughs> you could literally use the serger stitch to sew it on uh, after you trimmed off the edge. I talk about that in the handout as well. But here's my lace joining foot. Let's lift it up so that you can see. Now I don't want to cut that edge but I want to feed it through so I have exactly enough fabric to roll over for my rolled hem, right? So I set up the blade for the recommended setting for the rolled hem. That happens to be the M on the dial. M stands for marrow which is the industry word for rolled hem. So my blade is set up. Now really all I'm going to do is adjust the guide on the front so that it's guiding the fabric exactly where the blade would have cut. Now that I've done that, I've joined everything, I've adjusted everything on up, I'm just going to put the blade to sleep and I'm going to use this lace joining foot as a guide so that I'm feeding exactly the right amount of fabric in and I'm not trimming that folded edge because I want to keep it. So basically everything is set up. This is my practice piece. It's a leftover from doing my binding on the quilt. So let's do that rolled hem and see what it looks like.
the beautiful thing is this foot is going to help me guide exactly what I need in there. Now to also to help me join, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's little raised areas on the front of the foot. Those correspond to where I can have the five needles in the machine. I'm just using the right hand needle for the rolled hem. And so that's that needle position right there. And you can see that's going to kind of help you adjust the foot. Almost I mean, all of the baby lock accessory feet have those little marks in the toe of the foot to really help you know exactly where those needles are going to be. They really thought of everything. So let's finish this out and see what this looks like. Notice how with the foot to help me guide it, I could rock and roll. <laughs> the serger sews in a mighty quick lick. But look how pretty that is. Now I can make those threads closer together if I want by adjusting the length of the stitch. When you set up the rolled hem for the Baby Lock Accolade, it's really kind of auto magic. You just turn the dial to D. Well, it all tells you in your quick reference guide. But you can adjust the length of the stitch. But you don't have to change plates or anything like that. It's really quick and easy. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let me stitch on my little quilt. All right. So now the one thing you want to keep in mind is you've already put the entire binding on the quilt. I don't need my wonder clips for now. Because what I'm going to do is I am going to start in one of the corners of the quilt. Now when you fold this binding over to the front with your with your uh, little rolled hem, little rolled edge on there, what you're going to have is you're going to have this part in here is going to be naturally hidden. So that's where I'm going to start because the very time, the first place you start can be a little clunky looking. Uh, you could have that tail on there. So don't worry about it. Just start in that corner, fold your quarter under and see where that might be so that you can know where you're going to start. So I know I need to start right about there. I'm just going to put my clip to remind me. Now, you want to have that rolled hem in the very front, right? So when you're stitching on your quilt, you're going to fold it just like this. You're going to be seeing the right side of the binding, the side that's going to show out, and the back side of your quilt. Got it? Remember, it tells you all about that in the handout. So here we go. I'm going to get everything lined up. I know I need to start right about there. Now the corners might be a little bit fussy going around the corners, so just slow down when you're doing those. Remember, part, if you missed a tiny little bit, that's probably going to fold it in, in that corner when you turn it to the other side. So let me get everything orientated in here, move my parts to the side, and we'll start to stitch. Now I can see it's not quite where I want to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this handy little hole in the front to kind of help push my fabric over there so I can just get a just get a purchase on that front edge. And after that, I'm just going around the quilt. Now I've got quite a little quilt to go around here, but you can see how that's starting to be really that cute little piping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the whole quilt. When I come back, I'm going to show you what that looks like. And then we'll kind of move on to the cover and chain stitch. We'll re-thread for that and show you those really cool binding attachments. So I went around the binding of the whole quilt. Turned out pretty good. Remember, you can go pretty good clip on the straightaways. The corners can be a little bit fussy. So just take your time and you can turn the hand wheel and do it a stitch at a time if you have to. So let me show you. This is where I started. This is where I started. It looks a little messy, right? Well, that's actually going to fit right inside of that tuck when I turn the quilt to the, the binding to the right side. Now, I talked a little bit about taking your serger feet and doing them not exactly what they're meant to be. Uh, you can always take the pin tuck foot and make beautiful pin tucks with it. But I want to show you the back of this foot. It has this awesome little groove on the back. So now, if I wanted to sew this little binding down, what I really want to do is stitch right in that edge right there. So if you look at your serger feet, well, they come with instructions for doing what they're supposed to do. But what if I was to take this foot, fit that 
rolled edge right inside of that groove and then the machine would stitch if I put that right hand needle in remember there's the raised part of the toe showing it shows me it's going to be right in there I can use the chain stitch and stitch it down with the serger if I want to if I don't want to I can always use the sewing machine to stitch right along that edge and I have a pretty little 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 cording for my binding it adds a little bit remember it's pretty easy and if your serger does a rolled hem you can do this so if you have the baby lock four thread sergers it's going to work for this too but now let's move on to ta-da the cover and chain stitch so now the baby lock accolade like i said is an eight thread serger so i've taken away the parts that doing the overlock it has overlock that's where the pink threads are and where i've placed my gray threads is where i can set it up for a wide cover stitch a chain stitch or even a triple cover stitch so now i'm going to take off i took off the i took off the lace joining foot remember that's the one i used to give me that seam guide and I'm going to use the regular baby lock foot that came with the machine for this. Now, let's get this set up for cover stitch. What I did is I took out the needle that was for the overlock. And I put in the two needles, uh, C1 and C3, for doing the wide cover stitch. One thing that's great about a baby lock serger is they do give you that quick reference guide to help you thread the machine. But every part and piece is really clearly labeled. Even where you place the threads on the back. And if you look at all the different parts of the machine, it tells you literally where all those threads go. And you have the quick reference guide. If you get the inspiration guide, it even gives you all that in extra detail. So they really help you know all the functions of your machine so you can get the best use out of all 87 different stitch combinations. So now let's move on to the attachment where we can do our binding. Now if you get the foot kit, the Baby Lock Accolade has a 16 thread foot kit and this has 16 of the most popular feet for this machine and the attachments I'm going to show you now they come in that 16 foot kit so now let's look at those attachments the binder attachments and see what they do there's two sizes of two different types so I put I put fabric in so that you can see this is the single fold bias binder now remember you don't have to use bias you can use straight of grain uh, strips as well but if you can see it turns over that top edge and leaves that bottom edge flat that bottom edge is going to be covered by the back of the cover stitch this is what the back of that cover stitch looks like you can see that's going to cover that edge when we get everything set up so this is the cover stitch and this is what i have the machine set up for now well, I have to thread the cover stitch looper, but we're going to get to that in just a sec because, you know, it threads itself, right? So this one is the double fold bias binder. And what it does is it folds both the top and the bottom uh, parts of the strip under so that you're covering both the top and the bottom. We can use a, a cover stitch for that, but we can also use just a chain stitch. So this one the single fold is what we're going to start out with once we get threaded up here and it's going to look like this on the back can you see how that cover stitch covers over the back of the flat part of that binding and here's the front part so there's a there's a stitch line here a stitch line here and it's covering over the back now this is a pretty rockin little attachment and i'll tell you why i just made a garment and I use that for this edge coming around the top edge of the, of the garment. Here's my top edge. It's kind of a lightweight little um, rayon batik. It's a really lightweight fabric. So I didn't want anything super bulky up here. So I used this attachment. I cut my strip and you can see it covers over at the back. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I like this. I'm going to tell you that I am delighted with this finish. Look how professional that looks on the front and the back. So when you get a serger, you're basically going for a little bit more professional results in your sewing. And a serger is going to give you that 
Uh, a sewing machine can do a great job, don't get me wrong, it's always your first commitment, but a serger can give you that extra little something that give you that extra professional finish. Now, let's get this serger threaded up for the cover stitch. I've already threaded the two needles, they're pretty simple. The machine comes with a needle threader to help you get those in there, but what's awesome is this serger is an air thread serger. So that means I'm literally going to put the thread in the surging port and it's going to literally thread itself. Now I'm going to take off the cutting blade table and put on the cover stitch table. It just snaps right on in. Now I want to thread so I'm going to put the machine into threading, turn the knob on the side till it finds its happy place. Now, when you're threading for a cover stitch, you're going to be super happy that you have a self-threading serger. Why? Well, the upper looper and the lower looper, they're pretty easy to get to, but that cover stitch looper is elliptical, and it can go way back into the back of the machine to complete that stitch. No worries on the Baby Lock Accolade, it threads itself with tubular loopers through that, through that, um, through that cover stitch looper. <laughs> In other machines, you have all kinds of helper device to get you back into the <laughs> back regions of the machine. So now, all I have to do is take this thread, stick it into the threading port, ta-da, threaded with a push of a button. So I have, my, I have my cover stitch looper threaded, I have my two needles threaded. Let's attach that attachment. Oops, I need this to go down because I don't need that upper looper. So all I have to do is go into surging, turn the hand wheel, it's going to go to sleep until I want it back. Now, this is the cover stitch table and it has two little screw holes in the top of it. And with your machine in the handy dandy compartment on the side where you store all of your cool little accessories. Well, not all of them, there's even more. You have two little thumb screws to attach the, um, the folder. Now what the folder does, I'll bring this one up, I got it started. What the folder does is it takes the, it attaches to the front of the foot and it folds the fabric to where you're, it's manipulated exactly where you want it to be. So one way to really easily thread it to, I mean, to thread the, the um, not the machine, but the fabric into the attachment, is give yourself a little, kind of maybe like a little diagonal. Now, it says in your handout, but what you're going to always want is you're going to have more binding fabric than you're going to need for your project. Because you're going to want to get started on something with the, with the, um, when you when you start to sew when we start to sew this and it takes a little while to find its happy place So we're going to push this on through I'm just taking my little stylus here pushing it on in and you can kind of manhandle it a little bit and get it into the um, the attachment When you get it close to the edge, you can take a pair of tweezers and help pull it through. Ah, there it comes. So here it comes now. It's coming on through. Now, whatever size the attachment wants, it's going to give you that in the directions to cut the size of the strip. And I talk about that in the handout as well. So I pulled everything on through, you can see, and I'm going to attach it now to the bed of that cover, to that cover stitch table. And <laughs> I need my foot too, right? Okay, now, this foot, let me take it off for just for a second so that you can see it. I can adjust this attachment from side to side and from front to back. And so I suggest that you do that before you get started on your project. Take a sample, take a practice piece and see how that's going to work. And you know, you want to go to practice it anyway if you haven't used it before. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach the one screw, lift up my presser foot and kind of put the foot underneath the fabric underneath the needles. Now remember, I can see where the needles are here in the front of the toe of the foot as well. What I want, what I really, really, really want 
is I want this fold of fabric to be caught by this needle over here, the third cover stitch needle. And I want this needle to be just maybe on the other side of that fabric. So here we go. This is the wider one, so I'm probably not going to be able to get the edge of that fabric. It might be a better choice to use this one for maybe a fabric that doesn't ravel. There we go, and I can see it's going to work pretty good. So I'm going to tighten up this screw, and let me adjust it just a little bit. Tighten up that screw, and I'm going to add the second screw so the attachment doesn't wobble. Now the fabric's going to feed right through here, and by fabric that I'm going to bind the edge of is going to go right in there. So, like I said, it's going to look kind of like this on the front, and it's going to have that cover stitch covering it on the back. Whoops, lower the presser foot, and let the machine pull the fabric on through, and I can see I'm way over to one side. Well, that's why you cut a little bit extra. So let me move that over just a little bit. I'll raise my needle, move it over just a little bit. That looks a little bit better. Let's see how that works. You know, that's doing pretty good, but you're going to want to finesse it. Now that I've got everything started, I can put my fabric on in. This is the fabric I'm going to cover the edge of, and it literally flits on top of this platform and right in between there. And you can see how the, the folded edge is going to come over the top, and this edge on the bottom is going to be covered by the bottom of that cover stitch. and everything's going to be pulled on through. Now you don't want to fight it. You want to make sure this is nice and flat and this is flat on there. You don't want to pull back on it like the reins of a horse, but you're just going to have to gently go and have it flow through. And yeah, you're using your left and your right hand. That's why a little bit of practice is a good idea. If you're going a little bit, check it out. Oh, that's pretty good. I might want a little bit longer stitch length. I just turn the knob on the bottom. And it turned out pretty good. So you're going to want to just adjust it and see exactly what's going to work for you. So you're going to cover the back and you're going to have that folded edge over on the top. So basically just play with it. And you might want to cut your strips a little bit different depending on the size of them. I talk about that in the handout as well. Now let's talk about that double fold binder, shall we? Now let's take this one off and we're going to put the double fold binder on. Now, as I said, you can do this wide cover stitch with that, but you may also want to use just the chain stitch. So let's just change over to the chain stitch. I'm going to take off this attachment. Take my fabric out. And let's just take out that right hand needle to go down to a chain stitch. Where's my little, there it is. So I'm going to take out that right hand needle. We'll take the thread out as well. And now I've changed it to a chain stitch. Now you're going to want to make sure you tell the machine you've gone over to a chain stitch. That's the knob on the right. Like I said, on the serger, everything is clearly marked. So it says, go here for chain stitch. And it also tells you in your little quick reference guide. So now let's do a double fold, shall we? So now we're going to take this. I have started it already. 
It's the same procedure you're going to start it with the double fold as you are with the single fold, but you have to adjust them all every time because it just depends on your fabric and how you want to uh, and the size that you're going to use. It just depends. So let's get that fabric underneath that needle. Lower the foot. And remember, you're going to stitch for a couple inches just to make sure that everything is flowing. And it gives you a chance to check your placement of your attachment. I think that's going to be pretty good. I'm shooting for the folded edge to be just to the left of this mark. Remember, the marks where the needles are is marked on the toe of the foot, and it really helps you place the, it really helps you place the, um, the fabric where you want it to be. So let's see what that looks like. Now when you're doing a, when you're binding around the edge of something, what I'm going to recommend that you do is you're going to stitch everything down. You might want to baste it so you don't have all the kind of layers flopping around. So if you're doing a multi-layer item, go ahead, take it, and, and baste those edges down. So I'm going to take this, put it inside there. Now remember, you're going to want to push it right along the inside edge and it's going to bind over the top. And it can just be that easy. So you might want to enjoy putting binding on with either the single fold or the double fold binder. Now, I don't want to get you all excited, but I want to take you back just a second. This, to these attachments aren't necessarily what you're going to do to turn a corner on a quilt, right? So they are not meant to turn a sharp corner. So I'm going to suggest that if you do want to use them to bind your quilt, you might want to round that outside edge. And then you can just go around the edge with the binding and not have to turn the corner. If you do, what you can all, if you don't, if you want to just turn the corner, what I do is I give myself a little bit extra, take it to the back, fold it down, and I can either sew this with a sewing machine or I could sew it by hand. Not quite as pretty as it would be if I was sewing everything down by hand, but I think you'll have to admit, sewing with a binding attachment <laughs> makes that binding go super fast. And if I have to spend a little bit extra time with my corners, well, that's not that big a deal. I think I'm still ahead time-wise. So I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit how you can do use your serger feet to bind <laughs> the edge of fabric, garments, quilts, whatever you want to do. Now these attachments that I've shown you today come in the Baby Lock 16 piece foot kit. <laughs> and the kit also comes with really good instructions on just about all on, on all of the feet that come with it. So the Baby Lock Accolade, Overlock, Cover Stitch, rocking feet to do just about whatever you want. We've only scratched the surface on some of the feet. So I'm going to throw it over to George. He's going to tell you a little bit more about the Accolade. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you had a fun time. And you know, binding can be quick, fast, and easy. Serger's going to help. <laughs> Thank you for watching me today. I'm going to send it off to George and have a great day. Thanks, Kathy. That was an incredible presentation as always. You know, a serger can truly cut your sewing time by half, but so often sergers are difficult to use, so you don't want to go to your serger. You try to do everything on your sewing machine. Now, Baby Lock invented the serger back in 1967, and they were the first to incorporate air threading. The Baby Lock Accolade actually has motorized threading that threads all the loopers with a burst of air. Plus, it has automatic thread delivery. That means there's no tension. So I can use it on all different weights of, 
uh, fabric from denim to knit fabric to sheer fabric. I can work with thicker threads. I can work with woolly th well, nylon thread, all these different threads, all these different fabrics without ever adjusting t the tension. And that's what's truly amazing. Now this serger is an eight thread serger. So it actually is a, a serger and a cover hem all in one. Now I can use all eight threads at one time to work with heavy fabric or decorative fabric or ruffling. But I also can do uh, a cover hem, which is what you see in a lot of activewear on very stretchy fabric, also for home deck. But it truly has everything. And it's the easiest to use because you never have to adjust the tension. Again, with all the threads, all the fabrics, you never have to adjust it. Now, the Baby Lock Accolade, uh, we have a special package where it has a total retail value of $64.99. But right now, it's on sale for $39.99. We have interest-free payments of under $167 a month. We're offering free shipping across the country. But wait, for a limited time, we're offering a special bonus. Included with the Baby Lock Accolade is a 16-piece accessory kit that has all kinds of feet, like this binder feet, or belt loop foot, the ruffling foot, also a foot that allow you to sew over a wire to make your own ribbon. Uh, you also can do a sewing over beads and pearls. Also, there's one for sewing lace and many others. That's all included. Plus, we're including the inspirational guide, which is a step-by-step -step color book that walks you through every function, assuming you know nothing and gives you all the information you need. We're including several thread collections, including this Decora box, which has 12 weight rayon thread, which is gorgeous on decorative edges for uh, your different uh, two thread or three thread uh, decorative application. Plus, we're including a membership to Love and Knowledge that will show you all kinds of wonderful techniques and training on this machine. All this is included for under $167 a month, interest-free, or $39.99 if you want to pay for it. But don't wait. This is a limited offer. Click on the link uh, to order this machine or give us a call at 1-800-865-9664. Bye for now.